And it's our pleasure to have El Nathan John with us here in the studio and also fellow writer Ama Darko from Ghana. Thank you both very much for coming in this morning. It's a pleasure. Now, the two of you are in town for a literary conference uh, by the German Africa Foundation. Uh, how important are European readers for you? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, for me, um, I started my writing in Europe. And uh, my first uh, few publications were in Europe, Oxford to be precise. And I uh, interestingly have, in fact, my first book was uh, translated from the manuscript into German, though I wrote in English. Interesting. Yes. So you have a, an audience already here in yes, Europe. Yes, I have know. a very, well, mm, respectably moderate, okay. you know. <laughs> Particularly in <laughs> Germany. Then. In Germany, yes. And I do have two books, uh, funny, I have two books, which I wrote in English, I write in English. And I have two books that have been translated and published in German, but were never published in the original English. So that gives an idea about my, you know, the importance of uh, my German readership. Do you have more readers in Europe than in Africa? I suppose so, but I think that things are changing now, you know, especially because one of my books is now the uh, West Africa Examination Council Literature book, which is, a, I mean, if a book, uh, if your book lands on that, you know, on, on, on the list, it, kind, it, it gives you um, more exposure, you yeah, know, so, hope. yeah. So I think that now, yeah, it's expanding also in, uh, especially West Africa, you know. Now, Nathan, what about you? Uh, your readership, mainly uh, in Africa, in Nigeria, where we're yes, in... yes, I, 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 I live in Nigeria, and, and most of my readers are, are in Nigeria. However, it, it's important to to reach the world with the literature and with other types of writing, whether nonfiction or, or fiction. Uh, also, because a lot of the perceptions about what my country is is formed largely in Europe and and the U.S. And so, it's important for us to take our narrative our stories, our perception of who we are, what we are, and why we are in the space that we exist to the world. You're talking there to some degree about authenticity and, and cultural differences and perceptions and how European perceptions are, are shaping uh, African literature. I noticed that both, both of you are serving on a panel here at the literary conference that's taking place. Uh, the panel is addressing the question of authenticity in African writing. Uh, what's at issue when you talk about uh, authenticity in your writing? You know, uh, I, I, I think that a writer, you know, a bit of a writer is in everything that he went. That's what I think, yeah? And your, uh, 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 your upbringing, if I'm brought up in a certain environment, I, I was brought up in Ghana, you know. So uh, whatever, uh, 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 whatever I put into my writing would by all means be informed by uh, the, my makeup, you know, makeup as I was brought up, you know. So uh, I, it, I, I think that it's a natural thing. It's um, the, or if the authenticity. Yeah. You, you can't know, really get away from it. You yes, you can't. You integrate your yeah, own you life and experiences, yes, which exactly. in your case involves yes. both uh, Africa and, and, Europe. and Europe. Yes. Okay, in, in your biography. Uh, now, El, El, Nathan, you're a satirist. I mean, you, you do a lot of things. You're also a lawyer, as, as we saw in the film there. Uh, you poke fun at Nigerian personalities and, and habits uh, in your work. What sort of subject material are you, are you dealing with? Well, I, I deal with Nigerian society in general, Nigerian politics, and, and especially the social structure. Um, for me, it's important to shine a light and, and put a mirror in front of the Nigerian political class and let them see themselves uh, in this mirror, as opposed to writing angry articles and, and all of that. Also, I ex expand my work to include um, other places around the world, of course. Emma, you lived in Germany for six years back in the 1980s, and then you... you oh, you, yeah. You, she was I am. <laughs> <laughs> you, you returned to Ghana, um, and you know, so you, you have this sort of mixed biography. Is this uh, having an, an impact on your work? Has your work changed since you returned to Ghana? Uh, well, uh, the, the, the writings I, 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 I started when I was in Germany uh, was more of, um, you know, Ghana, Ghana German stories, you know, experiences, sort of, yeah. And then when I went back to Ghana, uh, the, um, 
the subjects change. It did not change completely. It's still about, you know, gender issues and social issues and stuff like that. But uh, it was more uh, concentrated on the Ghanaian society, you know. So I think that where I am at any particular time and what pushes me influences what uh, my choice of, you know, uh, narrative or whatever it is. You know? Okay, so let's, let's pick up on that uh, choice of, of narrative, of, of what you're writing with. I mean, you, you, I know, um, El Nathan, you're dealing with both nonfiction and fiction. You're working in, yes. in, in different, uh, different forms. I'm just wondering what, uh, what, do you, what stories need to be told about uh, your part of Africa right now? I would say that what needs to happen is an opening up the space so that no one is able to prescribe what stories need to be told. And so it's important that nuances is added to Is that happening to the... now where people, you feel that the people are prescribing what needs to be told? Well, in, in many ways, um, either as, as a reactionary uh, measure to, or, to a, a, an already existing prescription or prescription by itself. So, what again... What would that prescription be? Again, so, for example, there is a, there's a demand for a certain kind of story, you find. And, and that's mostly because of the, the people handling the narrative. And so if the owners of the narrative are in the forefront of, of handling the narrative, then, then they can add nuance and they do not have to be reactionary and they do not have to follow anyone's lead. It's their story and they tell it the way they want to tell are it. Are market forces shaping this uh, more than literary? Uh... Um, you know, we cannot rule out market forces because, of course, a writer needs a publisher and a writer needs to be read by a lot of people. And, for example, the UK and Europe is, is just at the centre of publishing, especially for a lot of us African writers. Mm -hmm. and so that is, is a factor. However, when, when you know, we write, especially when we get published in Nigeria, which is why I'm happy that I got published first in Nigeria, and we, we now extend that, and, and now I'm published also in the UK by Cassava Republic Press. Um, and, of course, now I'm, I'm, I'm having a German translation. I, I think that's the way it should be. A Nigerian story from Nigeria leaving Nigeria and going to other parts of the world on its own terms. Okay, and so, well, what sort of themes uh, did you work on that seemed to, to have a, a broad popularity that might appeal also to, to European and, and African readers? Um, I think that, you know, um, issues, the, the social issues, the uh, gender issues, you know, uh, women, female, well, no, I don't, I, I with, with the, a bit of a reservation. I do not uh, announce myself as a feminist, though. You know, mm -hmm. even though people refer to me like that, because of the issues I write about. But I think it's universal because things that affect women, you know, in one part of the country, affect other people probably on different levels. But they do still affect. We all, you know, people go through divorces, people go through separations, sure, hard but universal breaks, everything. Themes it's a are, universal thing, like you know. But then you do. Yeah. I write it probably in in. Um, in the limelight of what's happening in, in, in Ghana, you know, and uh, uh, I think it touches people everywhere, you okay. know. Well, I hope you uh, hope you have great success with all of your work and that you do thank continue you. to reach a, a larger and, and growing audience. Uh, Amadarko and Elnathan John, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thank, thank you. Pleasure.